And guys, appreciate you tuning in to my YouTube channel. This week's been about organization, so I talked a little bit about practice organization. Um, we'll be talking about game management stuff here in a little bit. Uh, this video, I want to talk about running a coach's meeting. I don't know about if you're like me, uh, as a head coach, I've tried my best to be intentional. My wife still says I meet way too much. She's probably right, uh, but I'm always looking at ways to be more efficient in our meetings because I've been a part of staffs that I feel like a lot of time is wasted where we're up there, the whole staff is up there, there's not really a need for us to be up there. And I know there's probably some good hangout time and I think there is a time and a place coaches do need to hang out because those bonds do matter. Uh, they shouldn't be in the middle of a 90 hour work week. Okay, so there are ways as a coach that we can do some things to kind of change the way people see uh, coaches meetings and agendas. Don't get me wrong, Work has to be done, and as a head coach, you're going to work a 90, 100-hour week. It's going to happen. Uh, don't torture the rest of your assistants with things they might not need to be a part of. And that's kind of what I want to talk about in this section. I think I've got a few materials on fbcoachsimpson.com if you want to kind of get some ideas or maybe templates on some things that we've done. I've got a coach's manual on there that really spells out a lot of this stuff if you want it more in detail. Okay, but let's talk about what should be kind of included and thought about when you're doing a, a coach's meeting. So the first thing is that there should be an agenda. Everyone should kind of know what's going to happen, roughly the time period. You know, nothing worse than you got five assistants that you, their wives are blowing them up because you didn't really tell them what time they were getting out. The kids have got to get picked up. That's got to get done. And, you know, they're going to stay there and do their job because they're good coaches. But as a head coach, you did them a disservice by not really spelling out a time frame and who needed to be there. So first thing is who needs to be there? As a head coach, a lot of times I felt if I was up there working, everyone else needed to be up there. And that's not always the case, okay? A head coach, offense coordinator, defense coordinator, certain jobs they do. And there are times a head coach, I, I need to meet with every coach, but I don't need to meet with every coach at the same time, and I don't need to meet with every coach and make the other nine guys sitting there and wait until I bring the other guy in. So a lot of times, weekend-wise, I'll set time periods where I'm going to meet with these certain positions. And again, that's on my website if you want to see exactly how I do that, but basically I'm bringing in the DC at this time, special teams coordinator at this time, then I'm bringing in you know the, the different parts of the staff and meeting with them. Okay, the second thing is where is it going to be? You know, I think uh, COVID kind of taught us some things can be done online. Some things can be done via email. Some things can be done. I like email and online because of uh, the fact that it's kind of recorded. I'm not a big, text is fine, but if it needs to be official, I'd rather do it through email or something else where I've got kind of proof and, you know, something's going on there. So, but we can do a lot of things that way. A lot of things can be accomplished that way. They don't have to be brought in there and discussed they can be done that direct that way. Okay. The next thing is when I kind of talk through what I do on the weekends, but uh, usually if you'll set a routine, hey, on Tuesday after practice, we're going to meet for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it's going to be every Tuesday. They kind of know that. Now, there's times you need to meet and you just have to do it. Uh, but if you can let them know as far out as possible or set a routine, that helps things a lot. Coaches kind of know what to expect. They know what's going to happen. Small or large, okay, that was what I kind of talked about with, does this need to be a meeting with the full staff? Does this involve your first year D-line coach, you know, or your first year, you know, receivers coach? Is it something he needs to really be involved with? Or can this be done with the coordinators? Can this be done with uh, just one side of the ball or the other if your staff broke up that way? So you need to think about, do I have to bring every coaching, every coach in here for this? Does this need to be 7th through 12th grade if you've got a staff like this? Or can it just be senior high? So think about how small you can make the meeting. That's the kind of meeting you need to do. Always smaller the better. You can get more accomplished, okay? And you're not going to have a lot of wasted time. Final thing here is this one. This is just a general life lesson. If I'm going to criticize a coach, that's probably going to be one-on-one, -on -one, okay? At most, it might be two-on-one. -on -one. If it's a serious situation, i got to have a witness. But usually, that's going to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, it needs to be done, and that's ultimately the job of the head coach is to help, which part of that is to critique your assistance. That needs to almost always be a one-on-one -on -one conversation, okay? Uh, encouragement needs to be in the large group, in front of the team, 
in front of the coaches, okay? As a head coach, there's a lot of times this will happen, and we go out, I hope no player knows that. You know, that's kind of the part about being a professional. Something as a young assistant coach, I had to learn. I wasn't very good at it. No one likes being criticized, okay? But that's the job of the head coach. If you don't like that, don't be a head coach, okay? And if you uh, are a good head coach, you can do this, but you understand in public, this should be what's done. And your coaches will understand they may not like you in the moment, but they'll at least appreciate the fact that it was done one-on-one. -on -one. If you ever do this, criticize in public, you're not going to get the results you want. Okay, you're not, It's not going to happen. So, Anyway, appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you got something from that. One day you may be a head coach. You might be one right now. and Maybe some of this stuff will help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made along the journey. If you would like more materials, they're on my website, fbcoachsimpson.com. You can go there, get what you want. Maybe it'll help you. Got that coach's manual on there. I think that's a really good tool. At least give you maybe an idea of some things to think about as a head coach. Appreciate your time. If you haven't done so, if you'd like and subscribe to this channel, I'm hoping to continue to do this as much as I'm able to.